Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I am Resident Loser Jeremy. This is Recording Studio Loser. If you've never been here before, we talk about the recording studio, tips, tricks, and tutorials and relationships in the music industry. I had a question about how to set up headphone mixes and it got me thinking about the different ways to do it. I'm gonna talk about two main ways to set up headphone mixes, how each one of them are different, how you would use each one, and why it's kind of worthwhile knowing how both work and how to do them. So I've got a session pulled up here on Pro Tools. It's worth noting, I, this is not Pro Tools specific. You could do this in any DAW. You do not have to have Pro Tools for this to work. I'm just working within Pro Tools. Don't let that be a distraction for you. This should work within any DAW that allows you to set up sends, outputs, and buses. So right off the bat, there's a couple things that you're gonna need to do this. Method one, an interface with some kind of an output. You need a headphone output, essentially. I'm not gonna get too much into the interface side of this because it's really easy for these to turn into very interface heavy tutorials and I don't want that to happen. So I'm assuming that you know how to route audio within your interface itself. But if we can assign outputs within our DAW to whatever outputs we have available on our interface, you're golden. The other side of this is to have something like a hearback system and there are affordable ways to do that and I'm gonna talk about it. And then of course there's the obvious, you need to have a set of headphones. So. Now my headphone of choice around the studio are these, the Telefunkens, you can kind of even see it. Really these are just direct sound headphones that have been rebranded, but their whole thing is they're incredibly isolating and they sound pretty good for a studio headphone. That's the kind of thing you have to weigh out here when picking your studio headphones. I would rather have something I know I'm not gonna have to worry about click bleed, especially with musicians that don't necessarily know if what they're listening to is too loud, too quiet. I don't have to worry about bleed with something like this because they're very isolating and they're really comfortable to wear for a long amount of time. So I'll put the link to these in the description below. Feel free to go pick them up if you're looking for some really, really good studio headphones. So let's jump over to Pro Tools now. So I've got a session pulled up. Let's take a listen to what we've got in here. Let's just take a listen to a verse two. Pop punky, rocky, there's a lot going on. In this particular session, there were three musicians and the vocalist. Each one of them needed to hear what was going on. So let's talk about different ways we could do that. Let's flip over to our mix window, which if you're in Pro Tools and you're on a Mac, command equal sign. Boop, boop. So let's only take a look at what we need to look at. So let's only look at sends here. And you can see we are here on the top and we can see our entire session laid out in front of us. So let's say we need to get the drummer a real quick mix. So I'm gonna select all of the drum tracks that I want the drummer to be able to hear. We're gonna go up here to our first send, select an output. The way my interface works, which I'm in Pro Tools HD, I have a Burl mothership over there. So my outputs are labeled like A, one and two, all the way through 16. I also have digital outputs that I will show you in just a bit and how those come in handy. For this purpose, let's just pick A1314. So now we have all of our outputs on our drums going through 13 to 14. I still have these selected. Let's go ahead and hit command and we will click this. That opens up kind of a mixer view of what's going on. And there's a few things I can control right from here. So if the drummer is doing this and he's like, you know what, I don't need to hear the rooms. So I would come back to my room mics over here on the right, just pull those out of his ears. So now of course the drummer wants to hear the entire mix. So we need to give him everything in his ears. So let's give him everything else. Great. So now the drummer has, great. So now the drummer has everything in his ears. So let's say we are going through this mix and I need to solo something. Now we're going through playing this and I really need to listen to the acoustic guitar, so I solo it. Now we just caused a problem because you can see the acoustic has signal going to that output and nothing else does. So now the drummer is now also listening to just the acoustic and we don't want that to happen. We need the drummer to be able to hear whatever they want to hear at any given point. So what we need to do is put everything on pre-fader. An easy way to do that, we're just gonna select every track, hold option, 
click that P. That puts everything in pre-fader mode. So now when I solo that acoustic, it's not going to affect that drummer's mix whatsoever. And you can see signal coming up on all these different channels. That's good, that's going to the drummer's ears. They can hear whatever they want. That also means I can send the click to the drummer who often needs a lot of it. Probably not that much, let's be kind. But I can now turn the click totally off in the control room because I hate listening to click. When I trust my drummer, I don't need to listen to that click but they do, so they can keep it on in their ears. I'm not gonna listen to it, it's on pre-fader. So that's just one player. And the beauty of this is you could do this as many times as you want, granted you have the outputs on your interface to do it. So we set up the drummers, but right below that, if we want to, we can set up, let's just pick an output here. We'll call this the singers. So let's go ahead and open that one up. Go ahead and put everything in pre-fader, just like we did before. Now this time with the singer, in their case, they want the vocal effects in their ears. So I have that over here so they can hear what's going on. So now if I unmute the vocal. That's obviously way too much, just showing that the output is there. So now the singer and the drummer can listen to whatever they want. Say that the singer doesn't want click at all, so I can pull that completely out. They both have my talkback, so when I hit my talkback button right here, hello, hello, my talkback is coming on. Great, that offers us a whole lot of flexibility, and that's one way to do it, but you do have to sit here and mix everything all the time for everyone's ears. If somebody wants more of something or less of something or pan to a different side, you're the one that has to do that. So is there a different way to do this? The answer is yes. So let's go ahead and get rid of sends F through J, and let's pull up sends A through E, where I already have a lot set up for us to look at. So now this looks awfully similar to what we did before. The main difference here being we're using a system to run this for us. In this case, we're looking at the Behringer PowerPlay system. This is the system that I installed when the studio first opened. It has 16 channels of whatever you want on it, an EQ that sounds like trash, a limiter that sounds like trash, but it lets the musicians hear what they need to hear and they can mix it themselves. So if you have players or an artist who kind of know how they like their ears to sound, and a lot of times people who play live now are using in-ears, whether they're playing at church or they're playing live. So having something like this really is pretty helpful if you can swing it. They're not that expensive. Let's take a look. The mixer as we see it here is $279. To be able to run that, you need the input module, which I have underneath the desk. This is $259. Beauty of this system is you can go analog in if you want to. These are all TRS connections, but you can also go ADAT in. That's where I'm working. So I don't have to have dedicated analog outputs, which for me running Burl's, those analog outputs are awfully expensive. I have an Avid HDIO, a digital HDIO, that has multiple ADAT inputs and outputs. And in this case, I'm using the outputs to go into the Behringer, line up to one through 16 on here. So back in Pro Tools, if I wanna set an output of something and I know I'm on drums, well, I have channels labeled on my Behringer. One and two are drums. So if I set this to one and two, I know that's gonna to go to my drum group on the Behringers. So now anybody who has a mixer out there can turn the drums up or down by selecting one and two and turning them up or down. It's that easy. The other beauty of having a system like this, you set it up one time, you can hit recall here. I have something saved on channel 16 that I know if the mixes just get completely wonky, I can set it back to zero by hitting recall and going to 16. Now all of this is set at zero, so I can come through and mix it however I want to. Easy to get back to a really good place where everybody can hear everything that they want to hear is everybody can mix their own ears. You don't have to worry about it, especially when you have a big band coming in where everybody wants to hear something slightly different. You don't have to sit here and take everybody's time to do that. They can just sit and play something for a few moments, mix their own ears, and everybody's completely happy. Obviously the caveat is every time you want one of these, it's 
about $250 a pop, but really that's not bad for the amount of time that it saves you. I have had this system since I opened the studio just about 10 years ago. I have never had issues with it. I've never had one break. Only instance I've ever had one not work is somebody was plugged into the headphone jack and walked away from the microphone without taking their headphones off and the whole thing fell to the floor. Even then, it still works using the line outputs, but the headphone jack is a little screwed up. Suffice it to say, that's my favorite way to work. It's the easiest, it's the quickest. It's one of those set it and forget it things. And being able to use pre-fader means that I can listen to whatever I want in the control room and I don't have to worry about it. And the same thing goes. My talkback still functions. Playback still functions. I can listen to the click or not. That's the beauty of having another set of cue mixes or headphone mixes that anybody can listen to. If we go back to our edit window and we pull up one of these, there's different things we can look at as far as how these outputs work. There is FMP, follow main pan. So if I change the panning on this tom, it's gonna move that fader for me, which is really handy. If I don't wanna worry about what that person in there, where the perspective is in their ear left to right, I can just set it in here and not worry about it. Now there's a few things to think about when setting this up. I make all these channels available for drummers, but it is important to realize Sometimes you don't want the drummer to hear literally everything on their kit, especially how you're hearing it. Sometimes what I will do is take away certain aspects and force the drummer to mix themselves. Sometimes you have just people who crank on overheads. If you give them just their kick drum and an overhead, you'd be shocked at how their playing changes. And they don't even really notice it. Or if you want them to play into a compressor of a room, just give them that compressed room. So if I don't want a drummer to hear something, I can literally just sit here and bypass any one of these that I don't want them to be listening to. A lot of times I will definitely have overheads in their ears because that's the main thing that we're picking up on drums. Either way, whichever method you choose to do, using send outputs within your mixer, going to headphones and mixing it for the band themselves, or if you offer something like mixes like this, it kind of gives you a little more flexibility. You're not limited to the number of outputs you have on your interface. You're more limited to how many of these you can set up in the room and how many headphones headphones you have. And even this, if you want to split each one of these into mono, this could act as two different mixes. I'm using them in stereo. I have six of these float around so I can have six musicians, independent mixes at all times, not counting the outputs that I have here in the control room that I could set up more if I wanted to. Realistically, you're not gonna need that many things. Most of us starting out at home, we just need one headphone mix and sometimes a send is the perfect way to do that. You're gonna set it up once, never think about it again, but it's important to know how to do that. Anyway guys, I hope this sheds some light on how to set up headphones and the different ways that you can do that. If you're looking to check one of these Behringer's out, I highly recommend it. These have been awfully dependable. I'm not a huge fan of everything Behringer makes, but these have been awesome for me. I haven't had a single issue. I will also link the headphones if you're looking for headphones down below. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I will see you guys in the next video.